Hey world, my name is Sheila and I have decided to start a floss tube. The water looked really warm, lots of swimmers look like they're having fun and I decided to jump in the pool and play with you guys. So welcome. Um, like I said, my name is Sheila and I go by the Crow River Stitcher here on Floss Tube and I started an Instagram. Have a few posts over there. So you can find me and follow me over there if you would like. And I can't wait to meet you guys and join this big, huge family. It's so fun watching all the floss tubes and what you guys are stitching. So motivating, inspiring, and enabling. <laughs> and I love it. I love everything about it. So I wanted to join the fun and play with you guys. So here I am. And... I am such a newbie. I just started cross stitching in November. So I just have a few months under my belt and I am loving it. I love everything about it. I love the just relaxation of the repetition. It's so calming at night and or even during the day or morning or whenever I want to do it. And just the best therapy unless you're making mistakes and taking stuff out and that's a little frustrating but that's only maybe 10% on a good day and 90% of the great stuff so I had went so I was looking on YouTube and I came across some hand embroidery work like floral work and all these cool stitches so I started out watching that and I went to my joint fabrics to pick up some fabric to start working on that and the lady at Joanne's like, well, if you want to start getting into hand embroidery stuff, you should go check out the store in the cities. We live in Minnesota and I'm about an hour from the Twin Cities. She's, and she said, there's this place called Stitchville, USA. You should go check it out. And I was like, okay. And I walked in and didn't even realize this whole world of needlework and one, I was overwhelmed. There was so much beautiful stuff. I just, my head was spinning, walking around, like, look, and I'm like, okay, I know I want to do cross stitch. Um, and I decided, I had picked up like 20 different things, put them back. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's hard, what's easy. And so I asked the lady and I had found this chart from Cottage cottage garden sampling. I love rabbits. So you will see if you watch, stay, stick around and watch me. I will have rabbit, a rabbit project going any given time, maybe one or two. Ah, bunnies, rap, they are such a soft spot for me. My daughter and I, we raise rabbits, we show rabbits, and they just have been a huge part of my life, my whole life. Actually, a story, story time. I was uh, maybe like 1920. I had just graduated cosmetology school and I was still living at home with my mom. And I snuck a rabbit in. I bought a rabbit at the mall and she hates it. She hated animals. So I, li I had a room upstairs and snuck this rabbit in one day while she was at work. And I'm like, a rabbit's quiet. She'll never know I have it. And I had it for maybe like two weeks before she found it. She heard it like scratching up in its cage. And I had it like tucked under a table with a blanket over it. So she got, I got caught with this rabbit. She's like, no, oh, no animals in the house. So I had to find a home. My boyfriend at the time took it. And so I still got to visit it. But oh, parents, let your kids have an animal. I don't know. There's just something. So then when I grew up and moved out on my own, I mean, I've had dogs and cats and birds and rabbits. And now we live on a farm. We have goats and cows and we've had pigs and we have chickens and we've had geese and all the animals. I think any animal I could have domesticated, I've had it. So sorry about that little tangent. I'll go off on tangent stories. So sorry. That's just I'll do it. <laughs> so if you like that, 
there will be more of it. If not, oh well. All right, so the jackrabbit. Back to that. And I, she recommended Ada, and this is it. Ta-da! My husband made the frame a long time ago, and I had a different embroidery, a machine embroidery picture in here. Actually, I had flipped her around. It was this cute little girl with a fox. And he barely fits in here. Like, his ears are almost cut off, but... I loved this color with him and I just wanted to get him done and on the wall and he had so many mistakes so frustrated so many times but I just kept on keeping on and the mistakes once they're on the wall they're like who cares and it's such a learning experience you're gonna make mistakes with whenever you start something new in life right and even when we're experienced, people still make mistakes. That's just part of life, right? You live and you learn and you move on and you keep on going and you don't dwell on the things. And as I've gotten older, I'm much better at not being such a perfectionist and stuff. It's like once you pass 50, there, I don't know if there's just this like switch in life, but you just start mellowing out with things. You're like, that's just not a big deal. So the mistakes, I love them. They're like little scars on our body. It's just part of who we are. This house reminds me of the house I grew up in. I, we grew up in an orangey brick house, and it just, I love that. So that is my very, very first cross stitch ever, and I am hooked, and I don't ever see myself not cross stitching as part of my thing. The next fully finished object I did was from... The Prairie Schooler, Farm Fresh, because we live on a farm. It's like a 30 acre hobby farm with animals that we raise and I ha have big gardens. We don't like plow big crops like cor corn. We have a bunch of corn fields around us that land that people farm on, but we, ha we just have kind of a really woodsy part of the farm with a big barn and Maybe as you get to know me, I'll post pictures of some of my animals. We'll ha we always have some type of critter, Roman. All right, so I decided I my second favorite farm animal are chickens. Chickens are hilarious. They're so fun to watch. They provide you with eggs for breakfast, lunch, dinner. I mean, depending on how many chickens you have, you could be eating eggs all the time. We eat tons of eggs. And nothing better than a farm fresh egg with free range chickens. They taste so much better than a store egg. 100%. 100%. And actually more nu nutritious for you. Better for you. Just, yeah, if you have a chance to, you know, get farm fresh eggs, try them. All right. So I, I picked her. I do plan on stitching all these eventually. I did want to start this bunny before Easter, but we are... It is the Monday before Easter right now, and I know I have way too much started that I kind of capping myself off at this. I have 20 whips right now, and I've only been at this since November. But my goal for 2024 was 24 starts, 24 finishes. And so gotta, you got to have that, right? So I finished it in... And this thing, they have little flat folds. They have a template on the back that you can do. I cut out the template, but I decided to make a pillow. And there, there it is. I did it on 40 count, and I don't know the... I didn't plan on doing a YouTube, so I, was, I wasn't keeping track of what I was working on in the very beginning. But I do know this is 40 count. It's just one over two. And... The, this trim I ha I've had in my stash forever. And I'm like, this looks like a little Fabergé egg. I was in a hurry to finish it and I kind of didn't get the, the nice roundness on the one side. And I thought I could like squish some of the fiber fill over there to puff it out. But it just sits up on my coffee bar and you know, another not perfect thing for my first pillow. 
next next one I work on, I'll take my time a little bit more. Sometimes I get in a hurry and I just want to like get things done and I will just kind of half ass them. And, and then after the fact, I like kick myself. I'm like, whoa, Sheila, you should have took your time. But uh, I don't know. And then another fully finished I did. I do not have it with me. I do have a picture of it on my Instagram. I gave it to a friend for her birthday. It is Tiny Modernist Air Balloon Sampler. So cute. Found this on her website. It, I think it's from the early 2000s, mid 2000s. Love the colors on there. They totally remind me of like, you know, nostalgic 2000s. She loves hot air balloons. I love bunnies. And we have been besties since kindergarten. So 45 years we've known each other. And these little houses just kind of remind me of growing up in our neighborhood together. And I highlighted and darkened our initials. And I made it into a little pillow and gave it to her. And for her birthday in February. So that is on my website on Instagram, the Crow River Stitcher. You can take a peek there. Another fully finished I got done. I just started it and whipped it out in a couple days. Now that spring's here, <clears throat> sorry, totally motivated to work on some spring stuff. So this is the Spring Quaker Primrose Cottage, a new release this year I picked up. So cute. The reason I picked this up, well, one, it's cute, but two, I wanted to test out silks. I've only worked with DMC and some over dyes, and this was my very first silk purchase. And I picked up the Belsois in Spring Violet. And there is my pillow. So pretty. Loved working with the silks. I love how fluffy they are and how smooth they go through the the linen. This is 36 count Silver Moon. I think Edinburgh. My lady at Stitchville, she'll just kind of abbreviate the designer. And so some of them I don't know, but it had Eden and then Silver Moon, 36 count. So I did two over one, two over two. And so pretty. The this purple is a lot cooler. This one looks a lot warmer. I love both of them, but since I wanted to try silks and then I finished it with this really cute little print, purple floral, tiny, at the guy at the quilt shop. It's from Maya Otani, I think, O-O-T-A-N-I. Really pretty. So there's another little pillow. I'm slowly getting pillows. I'm probably by the end of the year, my my husband will be like, what's with all these pillows around the house? I'm like, don't touch them. It's from Cross Stitch Magazine, the spring, April one. And without showing you, I think I may show it a tiny bit, but all things spring from Erin Elizabeth. Thought this was really cute. I did change out the white because I, I had some leftover of the Belsois and I wanted to kind of keep the, if I, if I did two pillows, if I did two pillows, I wanted the purples to kind of coordinate and match a little bit if I, you know, have them sitting close to each other. So I, instead of the white, I did the purple there and did some purple in the bird. So this was just like one night's work. I am such an, I'm a night owl. I'll stay up till two, three in the morning and sleep to like nine, just working on this when the house is so quiet. And yeah, just still have some of the little cans to do in the border. But another night and this will be done. That was quick. This is on 28 count even weave called Ivory from Hobby Lobby. I just picked up. I wanted to try out different mediums, different fabrics, different textures, different. I, I like just trying different things to see what you really like and not. And I like working on even weave. 
I like it better than some Ada. That, when I did the, uh, the Jackrabbit, that was a really soft Ada. Like, the really stiff Adas, they fatigue my hand for some reason. When I'm pulling the, all the floss through, there's so much, like, tension and drag that I, it starts fatiguing me and I, it gets sore and I can't work on them for long periods of time. So if I'm going to work on an Ada that's a little stiffer, I can only work short little, you know, times. So have you guys noticed that at all with some Adas or not? Maybe it's just my old lady hands too that can't handle some of the, the things I could when I was younger. But I do notice that some of the Adas will fatigue will fatigue me. And I don't get that with linen at all. None of that I've tried. So the next one, I, I don't have a picture. It's free on Hands Across the Sea website. And it's called, I think, Pretty Parrot, Pretty Polly Parrot, something. So that is that. This is the fabric I also got at Joann's that I was talking about earlier in kind of a weed color. It's a, it's in the apparel and it's half linen, half cotton. And the holes remind me of like on a die, the number five on a die is like, you know, you've got the two, the two, and then the middle, the weave kind of looks like that. So it's really easy to follow and use and it works really well. So that is kind of a, a little hack if you want to try a, another fabric because I think it's $12.99 a yard and often you can use your 50% off Joann's coupon. So a whole yard of fabric for six, seven dollars that you can cut up and you can hand dye and try different things to just play around with it and not be as expensive, especially some of the smalls that you don't need a big you know, nice, like if I'm going to do a huge sampler, I will buy the, the, the nicer linen fabric and cause you're spending that much time. I'm not going to cut corners, but some of these little smalls that you just make into a little pillow or something that this works, it works lovely. So that's an option out there. They have it in different colors. I bought it in like this mustard color they have it in white uh and navy so if you want to give that a try it's it's kind of fun for some of the smalls and you can cut some corners because this like all craft hobbies get very expensive and i don't mind spending the money on things sometimes but then sometimes I'm like oh I can cut the little corner here cut a little corner there to put more money towards something else so that's like you know we're always trying to get the best bang for a buck the next one my daughter asked me to do and I got it off Etsy it is vows from um the corpse bride she loves Tim Burton all Tim Burton movies so I forgot the, is it Enzo? I think Enzo, something Enzo on Etsy. I'll, I'll link it down below, but super fun. I love the butterfly. Actually, I have a butterfly tattoo. My only tattoo I got when I was 25. So another animal that I adore and that moon is fun. So she asked me to work on this and I hand dyed this fabric. It's Ada. I believe it's either, I think it might be 16 count. I don't, I don't remember what one, but I hand dyed this. Turned out so fun. Love this. I hope I can replicate this again because I love it. I used Rit dye in charcoal and brown and I'm like oh gray and brown I don't know how that's gonna work but it's turned out great the modeling is so cool and the colors are great this works out perfect on this any type of Halloween or moody type of fabric 
I started this way and realized, oh, I might not have enough. So I quickly changed it around. And I love working with one color when you are not in the mood to think very much. It's just really kind of monot not monotonous, but just repetitious, just one color. And, but I'm excited to get, I'm saving, of course, the, the butterfly for last, but this will get framed for her and hang in her room. She's 17 and she loves all dark stuff. She's like Stephen King and scary movie. Ever since she was a little kid, she loved scary movies. Halloween is her favorite time of year. She has Halloween decorations up all year round. And she's, she's not a goth girl, but she's as close to goth as you could get not looking goth. She looks like just a normal, she doesn't wear the, the dark makeup, but all her clothes, she loves heavy metal, which I got her into Metallica when she was younger, but she loves just black. She wears black all the time. So this will be perfect up in her room. And fun. So that's, that will get done before Halloween for her, for sure. And actually, there's a YouTuber, I don't remember her name. It's a mother-daughter combo, but she's working on the Stephen King house. Loved it. And I'm like, oh, that would be perfect for my daughter too. So I might surprise her and start working on that and keep it a secret. I showed it to her. I was like, oh, this totally reminds me of you just to see what she would think of it before I start started it. Cause that's, you know, a decent piece. And she's like, so me, and she hearted my little text to her. So I might surprise her and come and start that. The infamous, we will see, we'll see. The next one I have going right now that I worked on this week is Anne Thomas, 1854. When I saw those birds, I, I needed to have it. Look at those birds. So beautiful really struggled. I bought two different, three different fabrics for this. And I still, I'm, I committed and I'm like, I still am him and ha and I've never had a problem with picking fabric and second guessing myself. But this one keeps second guessing myself because the picture looks peachy. A really warm peachy fabric and it doesn't say what it uses like so many of them have what they use this one just says use what you want and I'm like ah, I need some needs a jumping off point but so the fabric I decided and I'm sticking to it because I've got I just finished one whole page is fox and rabbit up in the attic and this is one page out of like 20 pages <laughs> and there's so many this was almost like full coverage area like there's just a tiny bit in there that's not full coverage on the corners it's, she's she's big she is what is she um I'm on 40 count the design is uh 264 by 317 so good size she's i think one of my biggest ones right now i think i have one other big one that are two, two ooh. i have a couple other big ones oopsie but she will she'll be good size the fox and rabbit this up in the attic i am actually working on another project that i haven't pulled out i have a monthly thing on it and I just got it for this month of March on the 15th. So I haven't started it, but I do, I'm working on two of this, two, two projects on this color. And I, I do love it. And what I love about the Fox and Rabbit is it's so, uh, like there's this fun little bounce to the fabric. Even if you have a tot in your hoop, there's a soft like bounciness to it that I like. It feels like not like a trampoline, but it's just, I, I don't know. I, it's not like any other fabric that I've tried so far. I really like it. So that is my start. 
gorgeous. But a ton of confetti and a ton of stitches in that little area. I don't know how long it'll take me, but like, look at all. You just keep on plugging away and little by little, you've got a finished project. All right. I'm going to run out of space there. The next one, I saw Kim, the contented needleworker. She had pulled out that she had been working on it and loved it and decided, ran over to the Etsy shop and picked it up. It's from Mojo Stitches and it's Echoes of a Garden. So, so cool. Another big one and all that dense grass. So she'll, she'll be a while that I started. So I'm a lefty and I'll start almost all my projects top left hand corner. So that's kind of my little thing I start. And I, I'm usually kind of work page by page. Sometimes I'll, if I'm almost finished with a page and I'll, there's one little motif that goes into a second page, I'll, you know, finish that motif off. But Page by page, that's kind of how I work right now. But it could change, but this is this is on 36 count, and I am just doing one over two. I have a few projects that I've started two over two and one over two on 36 because I don't know what I like yet. I'm kind of just figuring it out, and it really depends on the fabric. Some fabrics, 36 is a little tighter weave than some. I have one that I started one over one on and the holes are a little bit bigger and I wish I would have done two, but I'm not going to pull it out, but love the colors. I love those clouds are so cool. So cool. This is a um, 36 count. Uh, I keep the tags on. She staples them on. Atomic Ranch Mellow Stone 36. Really pretty. I'm excited. I'm excited to get this one. I'm I'm going straight down and get to the grass area. I want to kind of work over and hit that deer. I might save her till the very end. She, she's in the middle. I might like. I'm gonna work down and then over. I think all the way down across, back up, and then kind of save her for the very middle, the end. Maybe. But she's cool. I do want to get to her, but I kind of want to get that, that all that grass. Maybe get half the grass and then move up, but all right. The next one. So I didn't realize I'm a sampler girl. When I first went to the the store, I saw all these little cutesy little things and I was like, oh, and I saw these samplers. I'm like, well, that's weird. What's with the alphabets? What's with all that? And then when I started watching more, I got this appreciation for samplers and hands across the sea. Oh, I, I, I'd want to start and finish all of the samplers on there eventually. But this one, it's Margaret Beatty, Beatty, Beatty. I got off the web, her website off hands across the sea website. Of course, bunnies and I love the bright fun colors so I picked this up I think just last week week and a half and started her and loving loving this one I did not want to put it down and this one is also on my Joanne fabric linen because she's just kind of a small I'm like I'm just gonna do that so work the around the whole border and then start in the alphabet and just kind of working my way down want to save the girl and the bunny for last those colors this is just dmc conversion beautiful i love the bright colors love it just i just stuck with kind of a very soft neutral no modeling i didn't dye this one at all but yeah, she should be a pretty quick finish. I would say, you know, a week, 
week more of work and she'll be done. And I, I like the little snacky samplers. I should have started her for my January one, but I didn't. I didn't start a January 1st, like, what is that called? Um, I like a good luck sampler or something. I, I don't remember, but next January. Always next year, right? The next guy I picked or that I worked on this week is from the Blue Flower Huckleberry Farm. This one, I started January 15th. My grandma, I'm, this one is for my grandma, my mom's mom. She died January 15th and they grew up up northern Minnesota and they went blueberry picking every like August was like the blueberry time to go pick wild blueberries and going up north and visiting that time of year we'd we'd be up there like a couple weeks in the summer and she would make blueberry pie and we'd have fresh blueberries with heavy whipping cream for breakfast in a bowl with sugar and blueberries and she would tell us stories that her and my grandpa would have to bring the shotgun because when they're foraging for the blueberries up in the woods, so are the bears. So she would tell us stories about the bears up there. And her house was yellow. And this just reminded me of my grandma. And then me with a butterfly. And I wanted a sampler for her. So I'll, I'll do something with her initials. I, I don't know what. I highlighted the D in one of the yellows, but I don't love that right now. Her name was Dorothy. And yeah, so this one I work on for sure. So she was born January 1st, died on the 15th. She was 80. And so on the 1st and the 15th, I pull this out and work on. And sometimes when I'm in the mood to work on it too, but those two days, I try to pull it out for sure on the 15th of every month. And this is, the fabric is, Fiber on a Whim called Kunzite, and this is 40 count. It's like a really soft lavender, purple lavender color. Not a lot of modeling, a little bit, just very subtle, but that is what I have so far. Of course, you know, top left, working my way over. The house was so fun. I love that yellow house and the butterfly. The bear, the, so cute, everything about it. So I'll probably just continue working my way over and then down on this one. Cause the border, the border doesn't like have a full, it's just kind of a side border down. So you don't have to worry about it matching up perfectly. <laughs> That's always so nerve wracking is getting that border to match up. And you're like, if you're off, you're off, but yeah, uh, at least the linen is so forgiving that you can just pull out and and start over. All right, is that all that I've worked on? Yeah, that's all that I worked on the last week. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Yep, that's about it. So I will show you. A little bit of haul I have so I, I have a lot of haul I'm just gonna show a, a couple things that I got that I plan on starting pretty soon so this is samplings number one and I wanted to get this started for Easter but I don't know maybe Maybe, maybe even Easter Sunday I'll start it. This won't take long. I can whip that little guy out. The, it comes with these two fabrics in the pack and then the egg. And so I have it kitted up and I have it on, what did I do it on? I think it's Newcastle 40 Platinum. It's just her that says, N-E-W-C. So I'm thinking, is that a Newcastle? I don't know. Platinum. 
it's just kind of a nice warm color. So I'll kit it up with just BMC. It does call, they do have like, I think the over dyes, but I just grabbed DMC this time. And so maybe Easter Sunday, I will start this little guy and get it whipped out and then display it next year. The other one I want to start pretty soon is Heartstring Samplery Scenic Sampler. What I love about this, well, the willow tree is so cool. And I love how it's not symmetrical, how it's the house is off to one side. It just gives a whole different look than a lot of the samplers out there. The colors look gorgeous. Love the butterfly. The crap. Yeah, the that border is pretty. She's she's kind of a good size. Um, what is the size? Open it up. I should have had it out. Um, 247 by 215. So yeah, pretty good size. So pretty. This I am going to work. I got it all kitted up. This actually has a lot of overdyes. And this one I did get all the overdyes weeks, weeks and classics. And I'm working on, it must be by Stephanie. It's, it says Steph B in Colonial Parchment, 40 cone. So that is what I'm going to have. It's not going to be overly huge. This is um, 15 and a quarter by 17, three quarters. I just usually do like a two inch margin. I don't need a whole lot. But love the modeling on here. Really pretty color. So, yep. I'm excited to start that. I'm not going to start it really soon. But this will be probably one of the next big ones I start. I'm at 20 whips. And I really want to stick at 20. That's kind of my goal. That's my happy sweet spot right now. I think that's good so there's a couple in my stash that i'm almost done with so once i can get those cranked out then then i will allow myself the a new start of a big guy little guys that are you know take a couple you know like some littles which i need to get more littles in my life i keep going to these big mama jamas and i'm like okay get some get some littles in your life sheila so i was at the the thrift store and I found this from I think it's 1991 I looked in there it's a little kit it comes with uh, the really scratchy Ada and the fabric and all the floss and it was only two dollars and it might have even been 50% off I might have got it for like a dollar but like this 90s vibe with that goose and that bear and there's something about it I was like oh it's just so nostalgic I'll probably just work on that a little bit when I get the wild hair and I just I find it really kind of 1990s vibe I'm a actually it was graduated in 1990 exactly 1990 and so this is kind of the, the style that was graduation time. And so those are my couple little hauls I was going to show. I'll, I have more that I'm spread out next time. So I make all my little project bags because I sew all my project bags I do myself. And I should have showed a couple. I'll show a couple that some of these were in. So I have this little guy. This was just like Walmart fabric, little charms. That was really cute. Same with this Walmart fabric. And usually Walmart's, it's a hit or miss with their quality, but this one, you know, just for, I'm not gonna do a, a big, huge, you know, month work of quilts in like a cheaper fabric. I'm going to spend the money at a nice quilt fabric for the fabric when you wanna do like a legacy quilt. 
but a little project bags that you're not throwing in the washing machine and you know the colors aren't going to fade I'll, I'll use you know whatever and this was just a bunch for my stash this is what my daughter's little uh her project sits in this halloween bag but been loving doing some of the patchwork and i'm like you know what i love sewing and i thought well you know what maybe i'll s i've always i've had an etsy shop years ago when i was making kids clothes and then i shut it down when we moved out to the farm about eight years ago and I thought, well, maybe I'll make some project bags, put them up on my Etsy shop and see if you guys like them. So I'm going to show you a few. And um, I was looking. So the project bag community, gorgeous, gorgeous. So many. And I love the patchwork and fun stuff. But I decided, because I have an embroidery, mach embroidery machine, I decided to do designs kind of in the middle and then coordinate. And the fabrics are going to be, I love thrifting. So I love uh, finding like men's shirts that I have cool patterns that I'll repurpose and, you know, come home, wash and cut up and, or vintage clothes, vintage sheets, curtains, all kinds of stuff, jeans, like this, excuse me, this guy that I did, these were an old pair of jeans of mine that I just, did and that's like a little embroidery farm but i love repurposing and reusing stuff so it doesn't end up in the landfill puts a whole new life to things so some of these bags will have upcycled vintage fabrics vintage clothing brand new designer uh quilt material so this is the first one that's up in my shop for Halloween and this is going to hold a big project I think this is like 13 by 14 everything's listed in my shop found this pumpkin guy with that raven so so fun so it's all machine embroidered and then some like fun decorative stitches I do around and just kind of coordinate the fabric fully lined the zippers are the YKK zippers and then I just, some of them have, if I have some matching ribbon, I add a little ribbon pole and my little tag. So my shop is She So Sassy. If that doesn't, I'll link it down below. So that's the first one. This one I love. I want to redo another one for myself. This kind of modern folk, folk embroidery design those unicorns love it love the colors the bright colors bright colors in there bright colors is back this is another big guy like 13 by 14 but that and because these so my they're going to be like one-offs just ones one i do because some of these fabrics are like I might have just a little bit left of something like this this was from a curtain that I, I had that and this so fun so it's got like a thicker upholstery feel and yeah so I can redo like so if this bag sells and you want this unicorn in maybe a different color or the same colors or I could redo the unicorn but you know add coordinating fabrics that are going to match so you can always message me and be like oh, I saw that unicorn and I loved it but it sold and I would love something another unicorn and I can come up with something this one is the sweet little bunny girl <laughs> because I'm a bunny girl fully lined and I, I do I use um in these I have quilt batting 100% cotton quilt batting and these this has bunnies on there too this one is a really cute little girl on a bike with some kittens and the back she kind of reminds me of French uh, like a French girl on her way like I could see her also going to the store to get a baguette 
So I have her, it's like the Eiffel Tower. That's what's on the inside. This is a littler bag. I want to make some small bags too that fit the smaller little ones because we don't all need big, huge bags. And sometimes you want a smaller one for a little smaller project that you can grab and go. So um, I actually even, this one, this one I made for myself, but I um, like a really small size that fits the, like the little, the little guy, the little sampler, you know, the little projects. So really cute. So some of the smaller sizes this one has vintage, like prim snowmen on the back. And I did fussy cut a few on the front. And there's a little woodland creature winter. I found this at an antique store. There's like two yards of it. And it's from like the 90s. So cute. Loved it. Love that dog. This is for. My daughter loved this design, so I'm like, oh, maybe someone else will love it for Halloween. It's this kind of lacy skull embroidery. So cool. With Halloween fabrics and some skulls on the back. So it's always nice to put a project that coordinates with that. This one is not embroidered. It's a panel, a fabric panel, and I have like black cat and owl. I did the pumpkin one first. Love the hot pink zipper, polka dots, polka dots. But that's great for any of your fall stuff that doesn't have to be Halloween, but it does have kind of a Halloween-y vibe too with the black, but you can use your fall stuff. This sweet little girl, this little fairy, floating away on her dandelion. I just thought she was cute with her red hair. And the florals in the back, polka dots. That's cute. You could put a little fancy lady in there. And then this one is perfect for some samplers with houses or any house theme. There's, I have quite a few house designs. The embroidery is actually just gorgeous. It took a while, but I think it just has such an impact. Just polka dots. I did, this one had, I had some red gingham, brown gingham there, but I thought they'd be perfect for all the houses. So I'll probably make quite a few more of these. Those turned out really cute. So if you are interested in any of those bags and you know, if they, if they do sell, I'll, keep adding one of a kind up there so you can just check it out. So she's so sassy on Etsy. And then I also, at the end, I'm going to just show a couple other projects I work on. So I crochet and I sew. And this last week I made from this, the crochet I love, Am Amigurumis. So this book I got at uh, Joanne's. Hello, Ami Gurumi. So many cute designs in there. And I decided to... Oh, you can see all the different designs. The dolls and... I went with... What is his name? Harley the Duckling, because it's Easter. Super cute. He's at the end of the book. I'll show you a big picture. How cute is he, right? So, I whipped him out in like two days. Oh, hello, crooked nose. You got a broken beak? There he is, Harley the duckling. <laughs> Love, look at his cute little eyebrows. It reminds me of a cartoon. I don't remember, I think, was it from Tom and Jerry? Did they have a little duckling too? that came to visit once in a while with his little little orange flapping legs. Yeah, so I have a whole shelf of amigurumi that sit in my sewing room. So I'll always show a project or two from these guys because there's just something so cute about amigurumi. I love crocheting like all the little bits and pieces 
and the face comes together, you know, when you start putting on the cheeks and the eyes and if there's any details, some of them have freckles and yeah, that's where you try to match up as good. It's hard with the, the change to get it really good, but yeah. Amigurumi. And there's so many designs, books, and Etsy shops, like anything you want to crochet. And if you know the basics of crochet, Amigurumi is pretty much all single crochet. So if you know how to do a single crochet and can kind of read a pattern, even if you can't, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that will have like, just they'll, you know, sit down and, and do a whole amigurumi video that you can learn. And then you can start learning to read patterns, but they're, they're pretty easy. Uh, once you get the magic circle, you're off to the races. Once in a while, you'll have to do some, like in some of the clothing, you'll have to do like some half double crochet or double crochet, but they're just all basic stitches and you just work little pieces by little pieces. This is just like a chain, you know, a chain and then go back in. And so, yeah, if you guys have ever wanted to try Amigurumi, highly recommend them. They're so much fun. And then the next, uh, where is, oh, it's over here. I keep moving. So I like making clothes for myself, especially summer clothes, like skirts and stuff. This is an older pad pattern and it's called Favorite Things by, and it's Bell Skirts by Pattern Designs, it looks like. Favorite Things Pattern Designs, designed by Kimberly Gladman. I've had this for years, since 2008 it came out. So I don't know if you can find it or not super simple skirt and the only thing and I've made this skirt before and I forgot about it but it calls for a seam down the center this two side seams and a back seam so you cut the the panels in four and even though there's a little bit of gathering and hides the the seam if you're working with certain um fabrics that have a certain pattern that need to match up it just it doesn't make sense. So I had forgot about that and I had altered it before and didn't cut. I just cut the two panels on, on the fold. So there wasn't a seam down the centers in the back, but I forgot about that. And I cut it the way the pattern did and it's fine, but I definitely, if I'm, I'm going to make this skirt again, it's, I'm not going to do the center seam or the seams down the middle. It's kind of hidden, but you can see right down the middle, those two those birds don't line up perfectly. When it's on, because there's a little bit of gathering, you don't notice it as much, but this is the skirt. Love the, the folk birds and the colors. I usually don't wear like, like this muty color, but it's down low. Like this color next to me doesn't really do much for me. If you ever, if I, um, I have, I follow, uh, dress your truth and, uh, it's, it's kind of like, it's a little bit of how the people do the colors and your skin and stuff. But this is, this follows more your energy of your personality and there's four four energies one two three four and i'm a type one which is kind of like it's color it's it's pure color with white so you a lot of i wear a lot of pastels like this color is is fine you know it's it's the green um and it's it's just i don't know if you ever have heard of Dress Your Truth, she's got a whole thing. And it's kind of fun to see what you are. And I knew I was a, a type one because it's just personality. It goes by your face and what type of angles you have in your face. And 
shapes that you have in your face. And I have a lot of roundness in my face, heart shaped in my face, circles, star points. Like, you know, my eyes kind of come to little points and I have circle nose. And yeah, so it's really interesting to get in there and see what type you are. My husband's also type one and he looks so good in like bright colors. My daughter's a type three, so she, this is more type three colors for her. The, the, the fall colors, the jewel tones are like a type three. And a type four wears pure, like bold reds, blues. They, they're the only type that can wear black. So I own nothing black in my wardrobe, wardrobe, no black shoes, not one black piece of clothing do I own. And I, I noticed once I started dressing without black, I felt like I have so much more like energy. When I wear black, I kind of feel heavy and like uh, kind of sleepy when I wear black. When I wear the bright colors, I feel like my total normal energy, like wee, yippy skippy type of energy. And that's just kind of who I am. So anyhow, another tangent. This is the cute little skirt. Love, I love it. I love skirts in the summer. You know, living on a farm, I can't wear a lot of like really fancy things out in the barn because, you know, it'll just be full of poo and ripped and mud. And But when I do leave the house, I almost always dress up. And that's just my personality. I, if I leave the house, I have to have makeup. I have to have lipstick. I have to have earrings. I feel naked without those things. And that's that's just part of who I am. So... I love having the nice little fun things to wear when I'm out and about. But. All right. I think that is everything. Uh, so glad to meet you guys. If you made it this far with all my ramblings, let me know what you love most about cross-stitching. Is it the gathering of the materials? Is it the planning your week out of what you're going to do? Is it the whole process of just sitting and doing it? Is it the process of having it on your wall? I know that I love the process. I think we all love the process or we wouldn't do it, right? But I do do it because I want the end product. That is my main goal. When I'm stitching, I'm like, can't wait to get this finished and fully finished. Like, I'm not going to have a drawer full of finished objects waiting to get fully finished. The minute I finish something, I'm like, get it done on the wall, in a pillow, on something, a bag, whatever it is. It's like, I have to have it complete. So I'm kind of a completist first and foremost, but I love the process. So what, where do you lie? What, what do you like more than the other? Cause we like it both, but if you have to just if you're just the process and then you just put it in a drawer and put it away, then yeah, like I'm just curious what you guys, I'm curious about you guys. I'm curious to learn and, and so excited to be here and part of this wonderful group. So thanks for having me in your little home for rambling for the last uh, hour. All right. Take care.